Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to have a look at this. Now, this thing is a fuse, and it's generally the one which would uh, come on the incoming supply to your property. And in most cases, this is not something you should be removing yourself, because first of all, it doesn't actually belong to you or the property owner. This is what would normally belong to the distribution network operator. So not something you should be pulling out. And also, uh, obviously, removing these does have certain hazards and risks involved with it. So uh, again, if you don't actually understand those, well, you shouldn't be removing it either. Now, uh, this deal with uh, main fuses, the whole point of this here is primarily to provide, obviously, a protection of whatever the rating of the fuse is. But also, this is what you would generally remove, say, if the electricity meter was going to be replaced, because this is where you would isolate the supply for that. Now, in general, uh, DNOs do not actually allow electricians and like to remove these. A couple of them actually do, if you follow their particular procedures. So obviously, we need to contact them to find out what those actually are. Now, of course, this one is not connected to any kind of supply, so we're just going to have a look at this and see what's actually inside here, how these things actually work. So uh, a quick closer look at this one and uh, actually see what's inside. Now, this one is just a single fuse on its own. This will be used for a single phase supply. There would also want to be a neutral uh, block next to this. Now, you can also get these in three phase versions, which have three of these and your neutral block as well. Now, these come in a variety of styles. This one happens to be a Series 7, made by Henley, as it says there, made in the UK. And they normally have labels on this, say, do not interfere with this apparatus. This is an offence, because, as I said earlier, these don't generally belong to the uh, owner of the building or whatever. These belong to the network operator. But uh, anyway, this one obviously is just uh, detached from there. Now, this one on the side says 100 amps. That doesn't necessarily mean it has a 100 amp fuse inside. What it means is the maximum fuse inside is 100 amps. But of course, it could have an 80 amp or some other value inside. So certainly if you're doing, say, an EICR on a property, don't just look at this thing, oh, 100 amp fuse, write it down, because that's just the maximum. It doesn't actually mean that there's a 100 amp fuse inside there. This particular one actually has a BS 1361 fuse in. That standard is actually now obsolete. It's now BS 88 instead. But uh, obviously this being an old one, that was valid at the time. It's also why it says 415 volts rather than the uh, more recent 400. Voltages haven't actually changed. It's just the uh, definitions in various documents that did. So uh, anyway, these uh, generally have a wire seal here through the hole there and there. And usually at the bottom as well to uh, indicate if someone's tampered with it. And the fuse itself pulls out like that, and then this is the piece which will be left on the wall. Now on this particular style, the incoming supply goes in the bottom here through one or both of these holes here, and then your outgoing wire would come out of the top here. So fuse bridges between the two, and of course when it's in place it just connects those together via the fuse. When it's removed, of course, it's disconnecting them, so you've got an isolated supply. And important to note that one the reason it's got this red colouring here is that this is still live even with the fuse out. And this is generally connected back to the transformer or the substation, whatever it is you've got. In most cases, you're going to have at least a 400 amp fuse on the end of that. It could be 800, or it could be no fuse at all in some cases, depending on the exact uh, configuration. But uh, in any case, if this got shorted on something else, there's going to be a big bang and a massive explosion and a fire. So uh, that's something you want to be avoiding. Top one here, again, that's just where your outgoing uh, tail would go, generally to your electricity meter. Now the terminals inside, you can see up inside there, are brass, and that's where the conductor would go up inside there. And the way they're actually secured is through the front here. You can see in there there's those small holes, and they actually have hexagonal topped screws in there, so you would actually need an insulated hexagonal driver, which would actually fit down into there, and that would tighten down the screws there. And of course over there, depending on how many wires you've got at the bottom, and again the same on the top here. So you see just the uh, holes go through. And there's the screws inside, those ones being uh, somewhat retracted and those being fully screwed in. And the reason it's got two here is so that you can either have a supply coming in and also going out to, say, another one, although that's not uh, particularly commonly used now, it's generally just one coming in. Of course, you can also connect two tails on the top here. So you might have, say, one going to your standard meter, one going to your off-peak uh, Economy 7 style. But again, those are fairly uh, uncommon now as well. Now this is the other part, and this is where the actual fuse goes, I'd say up to 100 amps on this particular one. Two prongs here, notice they've actually got uh, two components there, so there's a considerable amount of actual spring tension between those, so that when they go into the corresponding bottom piece, which is just a solid cast block of metal, then these two pieces here will actually 
contact on the sides. Basically the same on both sides there. Now these are made out of uh, glass reinforced polyester, basically sort of hard robust material, glass fibre inside and it's obviously designed to be insulating and sort of flame retardant and uh, all of that. Now this part uh, is where the fuse goes so it's just a single screw hold in uh, two pieces together. It comes about like that and then your fuse which is a cartridge fuse will actually go in these copper rings so uh, one ring on each end of the fuse, ceramic body and these are very high rated for rupture capacity so that uh, when a fault occurs this will actually reliably break it even if they say might be thousands of amps of a fault occurring so hence made of a high durability ceramic material and they're sand filled as well to uh, quench any arcing that goes on so the fuse goes in between those and then you've just got these little screws here which can be loosened obviously to put the fuse in just allows that to expand a little bit and then when they're tightened down that will just clamp around the fuse and uh, secure that in position and the other thing to note here as well is the fuse obviously being made of that uh, high durability ceramic material to withstand the huge amount of energy which is broken when the uh, fault occurs notice there's a huge overlap on this as well so the fuse sort of sits in there you've got this big overlap piece here which actually goes over the top of that so again you've got a good overlap over the whole thing to again avoid uh, explosions and things coming out of there and then just that screw so it holds it together so it goes back into the uh, holder we saw earlier. Now there's another variety of those and it's this one. Now this is exactly the same kind of arrangement. Uh, the only difference of course is that this is red and uh, the reason it's red is because there is no fuse in this. What this actually is is a solid link. Now it fits into this other holder in just the same way, just goes in the middle like that. So no uh, particular difference there. And uh, the reason these are used is say in a block of flats so you may have this say in the basement or some kind of room where all the stuff comes in so that's your actual fuse but you may have the actual meters in the individual flats so of course it's not appropriate for the uh, meter operator or however to install the meter upstairs have to go all the way downstairs to some distant switch room and remove this and then go upstairs and hope that they got the right one and also hope that nobody sticks this back in while they're working so what's done is that you have all of these say in a basement room which is the actual fuse cable from here going up to your individual flat and then in the flat you have this style so this would be used purely for disconnection of the supply when you want to say change the meter or whatever no fuse here because the fuse is then in the other one sort of downstairs on the intake room so take the screw out of this one we can just see uh, what's in here so same construction again the two halves there with a big overlap and all the rest but as you can see here this is just a solid metallic link there this uh, piece of uh, fairly thick wall metal tubing there so same idea of construction and you could take that out if you wanted just by loosening the screws here but it's purely providing a means of disconnection of the supply there's no overload protection here whatsoever hence the red colouring to indicate that it is literally just a solid link inside there so cut out fuses uh, grey ones or in some cases black ones if they're considerably older then uh, has a fuse inside but not necessarily what it says on the label that's just the maximum rating so unless you've actually seen inside and seen the fuse itself don't assume that it's say 100 amps or anything else and red ones which have no fuse whatsoever and are just a solid link only provided so you can disconnect things to say replace the electricity meter or whatever else now say so generally these are part of the uh, distribution network operator or DNO's equipment so not the kind of thing you should be taking out and poking about with or doing anything with at all and certainly if things like these fuses fail then you're going to be calling 105 to have the Dino come out and replace it so uh, not really uh, something you generally look at however there is another situation you may come across particularly in blocks of flats where the Dino may only deal with these say up into the position in the basement and then the cables from this to the individual flats and including these things are then under the responsibility of a BNO which is a building network operator now who the building network operator is really does depend on the individual block but suffice to say if you get the DNO out they may say oh well this is our stuff and that's it and everything else is somebody else's responsibility so uh, it may be uh, circumstances where you may have to uh, fit these or replace these or do something with these all depends on who the building operator is who runs the building who maintained it and all of that 
And there's even situations where in the past the DNO may have installed all the cabling and submains to the individual flats, but now they're going to say, well, actually, no, that's not ours anymore because it's now the BNO, even though they might not actually be a building network operator at all, they've just sort of uh, removed any uh, liability for those cables and now it's going to be down to presumably the building owner or whoever else to deal with them. So uh, just be careful of that in that uh, it might not be who you think it is that deals with things in that situation. So uh, anyway, that is it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.